call the meeting to order and ask everyone to rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we please have a roll? Council Fabian? Present. Council Caterina? Here. Council St. Clair? Here. Council Hayes? Here. Council Chicago? Here. Chairman Dunaway? Here. Uh, general public comments. Anyone wishing to address the council on any matter that is not on the agenda this evening should use this opportunity to approach the podium. Uh, and you have three minutes to speak. Anyone wishing to avail themselves of this opportunity? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment. Oh, we do. Well, very good. Thank you. I want to say that uh, I was on the building committee for this school, and I couldn't be prouder of the people of this town for supporting the referendum. I hope that more people would come in and not only see Wentworth, but I'd like, I wish people would come, especially you folks, to see it in action when the children are in the classrooms, not only here, but any of the elementary schools at our high school or our middle school that we were proud of these institutions and the education we're providing, and we thank you for your support. Thank you, Jackie. Jackie Perry on the uh, Scarborough School Board. Anyone else like to uh, address the council? No? No. Close the public comment period and uh, uh, ask for a motion on the minutes of September 21st, 2016. So moved. Second. Right. Any comments or corrections as to the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? <coughs> Unanimous, thank you. Uh, adjustments to the agenda. Yes, we would propose one adjustment. It would be a new order uh, simply offering a letter of support for a grant application that is the Trail Alliance is putting in uh, on behalf of the uh, so called Close the Gap fundraiser for the Eastern Trail. Including distributing that letter today. I apologize. The request came in uh, this afternoon, and the grant application is due before your next meeting. So we beg your indulgence. We will have it on the agenda. And where shall we insert this on the agenda? Signed are the treasurer's warrants, which I will address at a, uh, later in the uh, evening. Uh, order number, uh, no, the, the, the next order of business is the presentation by Kelly Crosby, principal, and Julie Kuckenberger, superintendent. And we welcome our new superintendent, Julie Kuckenberger, to the podium. Good evening, and thank you so much. Um, I'm very honored to be here tonight, and uh, excuse me if I uh, can't stop smiling, but I just finished my tour with some of our students, and it was fabulous. So we really got to not only see this beautiful facility, but hear from the students how they value um, the building and the way it allows them to be flexible in their learning, and really just um, their ability to articulate the way that the building is used was, was quite impressive. So. I hope you all enjoyed your tours as much as we did. Tonight, Kelly and I are going to um, give you a little sneak preview into what is happening here at Wentworth. So we had a wonderful tour by our students, but um, it's really quite amazing to think about the way the community uses this building. It's not only used by our teachers and our students on a daily basis, um, but the whole community comes inside this building at various points throughout the day, week, and year. So um, the title of our presentation is What's Happening? I wonder, would it make sense for us to be in the audience? I think we'll be able to appreciate it. Sure. And while we're just readjusting, I wanted to take a moment to thank all of the, the teachers who came and gave extra time tonight to be with the students on the tour, and um, also thank you to Kelly um, for putting together 
this tour and uh, the assistant principal, John Thurlow. So I'm going to start by giving you just some general background, um, the who, the what, and the why around uh, this school. So who's inside, what they do while they're here, and why it's so important that our students have a state-of-the-art learning facility like the Wentworth School. And then Kelly's going to really bring you in um, inside the four walls so you can see what it feels like on a day-to-day -day basis. <coughs> So one of the things that I think is so impressive about all of our schools here in Scarborough are the layers of leadership that exist in each school, and Wentworth is much the same. So we have the formal school leaders, Kelly Crosby as the principal and John Thurlow as the assistant principal, but it really is an all-hands-on-deck all approach, depending on you know what kind of tasks we're tackling or what kind of needs our students have at various points in the year. So here at Wentworth, um, under Kelly and John's leadership, there are several designated teacher leaders, and then we also have instructional coaches that lead the curriculum work. Um, so all of these folks share in the decision making that happens in the building and um, the, the vision and the planning for the work that our students experience on a daily basis. Uh, so I think that it's really important for the community to also know the, the shared commitment in the development of the programs here. So who are the students and staff of Wentworth? Um, just some facts and figures for you so you can get a sense of how many children are um, filling the halls each day and how many teachers. So in grade three, we have 168 students that are um, divided into eight separate <coughs> classrooms. Grade four, there's 153 students in eight classrooms. Um, and then we also have a multi-age classroom, grades three and four combined, so those students have the same teacher for, for two years. There's 123 students um, having that experience in six separate classrooms. In grade five, um, we have 225 students and 11 classroom teachers. So that brings our, our total up to 669 students in 33 classrooms with a class average of about 20 students for every classroom teacher, which is something that um, I know our school board is committed to keeping those class sizes at that level and that's something we should all be really proud of because it does allow for our students to get um, some individualized and personalized learning throughout the day. So just some more about the demographics of the students here at Wentworth. Um, in grade three, we have about 16% of the population that is uh, economically disadvantaged, and that that determination is, deter is based on whether or not they are receiving free or, or reduced lunch, um, and that is through an application process that the families complete with support from the schools. 13% of the third grade population is uh, receiving special education services. And then we have 1.6% of our third graders who are English language <coughs> learners receiving um, the, the highest level of support, which is considered <coughs> level one support. Um, there are other students who are um, still receiving services, but on a more on a monitoring basis. So in grade four, 11% of the students are economically disadvantaged, 8% of the students are receiving special education services, and um, we have three English language learners. In grade five, 17% of the population is economically disadvantaged in special education, 18% of the population with just one student in grade five who is receiving that level one um, service of English language, or ESL, mm -hmm. English as a second language. So this really mirrors our district statistics as well. Uh, overall, across the district, I think our special education population is about 12%, and our economically disadvantaged population is like 16.8, 16.9%. Some other facts and figures about our students and staff. There's a total of 89 <coughs> students receiving special mm -hmm. education services at Wentworth. 40 students have 504 plans. 19 students are enrolled in that, in that ESL program. Um, 35 students are enrolled in GATES, which is a gifted and talented program. Um, students also receive art, music, and or band, physical <coughs> education, pathways, um, and STEM classes weekly. And in fifth grade, our students are taking DARE. 
um, other services that our students may uh, receive here inside the school are occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, counseling, um, and then we also have social workers who support our students. So the idea of, in sharing this information is to just really kind of paint a picture of the amount, the magnitude of the services that our students are receiving and um, bringing awareness to the, the complexity of what it means to educate children today. Schools really have become full service, comprehensive, um, almost one stop shop um, and supporting students and families. And so we are constantly thinking about how do we make sure that we're reaching all of our students um, how do we ensure that we have the services that all students need in order to have access um, and equal opportunity to our curriculum and also the, the amenities that are offered in clubs and things like that. So some other cool school facts about Wentworth. Um, the other day I had the amazing opportunity of co-facilitating the faculty meeting and I got to watch dismissal happen here with 669 students going from their classrooms to 17 buses in the matter of minutes. It really is a work of art. Um, the coordination, the organization, and you know I talked about all hands on deck, but the students were sharing in the responsibility of making sure everybody got where they needed to go in a safe and timely manner and it was is quite, uh, quite beautiful. <laughs> so um, the kitchen here prepares about 230 bre breakfast meals each day. Again, anyone who's receiving free or reduced <coughs> lunch gets uh, breakfast for free. And we had a figure in there that I don't think was quite accurate, so I'll just say a lot of lunches are served every day, <laughs> and I can bring you a more specific number um, at another point. But we also are offering a lot of clubs. So um, students are participating in computer and technology clubs, gym bandies, as you saw on the tours, um, literature clubs. I just learned of a student who recently um, started in the creative writing club and was excited about that. There's a theater arts club, homework club, video club, civil rights team, yearbook club, um, foreign language club. Uh, so all of these extra or additional supports for students, because we're really just trying to find out what it is that you know gets them on fire each day and wants them to come to school, and really trying to create that passion for lifelong learning. And through um, services and programs like this for our kids, we're able to, to do that. So why do we need a facility that looks like this? Why do we need maker spaces and tinker labs and green rooms, all things that you and I didn't have when we were in school? And the short answer to that is that, you know, I, I think about this all the time, and lots of people have said this in many different ways, but the reality is that we're preparing our kids for jobs that don't even exist yet. Um, when I think about the latest, greatest, smartest technology that you and I could have, that is going to be so obsolete to my child when she's five, probably. <laughs> so, ask um, so, you know, not only are we creating them for jobs that don't exist, but using technologies that haven't yet been invented in order to solve problems that we don't even know are problems yet. Um, and that's a big thought to wrap your mind around. And so we think about what are the skills and attributes that our kids need in order to be ready for this very um, fast-changing, unpredictable future. And so we talk about 21st century skills, and that doesn't mean that they know how to use technology. That means that they're flexible and agile. That means that they have compassion and empathy. That they're uh, effective oral and written communicators. That also means that they, um, they have hope and they have optimism and they're able to think critically um, and have self-regulation. So that's what we talk about when we're talking about building or growing rather 21st century learners. And having a facility, a state-of-the-art facility like the Wentworth makes that work possible. So again, um, thank you to the community for your commitment to our kids and making sure that they get the education that they deserve so they can be successful and take care of us. And we're old. <laughs> um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Kelly Crosby. Kelly Crosby is the principal at Wentworth, and she has been um, a member of the Scarborough Learning Team since 2002. She started as a middle school teacher here in Scarborough, and um, didn't take long for the leaders in the district to recognize her talents and skills. 
she's super creative, organized, enthusiastic, and definitely student-centered. So it's an honor to have a principal like Kelly working with our kids, and I would like to introduce her now. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Thank you all for joining us this evening for the tours and for the meeting. And thank you very much to the town council and Mr. Hall for your willingness to experiment with the remote broadcast from this location. I think so far so good. I see. Awesome. Great. And thank you for those joining us at home. This idea origin, um, originated last winter and spring when I had the privilege of serving with Councilor Chair Donovan on the Superintendent Search Committee. And we had a conversation about how it would be great to really open up the walls of the school and bring people in and show the community this wonderful thing that they have invested in. So um, not only I invited him for a tour, he and his wife, we spent some time together, and not only did our search committee find a very fantastic superintendent for our district, but also <coughs> brought us all together here tonight. So that's really exciting and some background. Um, our story with the Wentworth School, 2010, in the winter about that time, um, was really the most current idea for a new Wentworth School. When at the old school, asbestos, mold, air quality concerns were presented at the Benjamin F. Wentworth Intermediate School. Subsequently, a 40-plus member building committee formed, um, and that was led by committee member Paul Kozell, and it was an incredibly high-functioning team of folks representing many, many stakeholders. Um, with broad support from the school board and the town council at the time, the question was placed on the ballot in November 2011, and the bond question passed with overwhelming support from our community and our voters. In summer of 2012, the project went out to bid, and great news right off the bat, on the first day, a bid came in $3 million <laughs> under budget. With this good news in hand, construction began in the fall of 2012 and moved forward really without any major incident. Um, so that really led us to our opening day in September, on September, 20, on September 2nd, 2014, Wentworth opened for nearly 800 students and staff, um, and we have room to grow. We have room to grow in this building um, still today, so um, with, so with foresight. And today we want to really share with you the opportunities that this investment has provided for our students and our community and our future. A little note at the bottom that the total project cost was $35 million locally funded, and just a huge thank you to the community for that investment. So the school features, we, um, Mr. Thurlow and I joke all the time that we should have segways or roller skates or something to make our way around the 163,000 square feet um, with 40 regular classrooms. And today I counted on a map um, over 170 rooms. I had somebody double check, like is, it, am, I, is am I going crazy here? 170 rooms, that includes mechanical rooms and that sort of thing too, but that's pretty impressive. Um, the design of the building is really creative and well done as well because, as Julie mentioned, this is not just a school. We are not open Monday to Friday, 8 to 3.30. This is really a community used building. So if you notice the H portion of the building, that's where all the classrooms are and the doors can be closed. And on the weekend, the other portions of the building are open for a myriad of use that I will talk about um, in, in just a moment. you just heard all about it if you took a tour with some of our very fabulous tour guides. So other Wentworth School features, we have 21st century technology that you saw a demo with Nate over here on some of that technology, interactive whiteboards, one-to-one -one computing, document cameras, wireless connectivity, and 3D printers are some of those things. Um, you'll see later how having access to technology at the point of learning has opened doors that we never had access to in the previous building when we were negotiating um, and bargaining for the use of two kind of antiquated computer labs and signing out and trying to get in there whenever we could. Um, the geothermal heating and cooling system, in the final years at the old Wentworth with really very little air circulation and windows that were sealed closed due to asbestos, 
there were some days in the fall and in the spring that were really, really hot. And I just remember kids, it, not a lot of learning was happening, let's just put it that way, because kids were trying to stay cool and eating popsicles and fans were going. Nothing makes my heart happier than on a really hot day when kids walk into this building and go, oh, so good in here. Um, and it does, and it has changed everything because learning can happen regardless of the weather outside. So that has been really wonderful, and it's also an environmentally sound and efficient system. And then I think another really important thing to note is that this school was designed with input, including many, many stakeholders, including students who tested and made recommendations for furniture, storage, playground equipment. So the school is really very functioning. We think seeing is believing, so we went straight to the source, the kids, just like we did tonight on the tours. Um, and I know that you heard through the mouths of our very bright and eager students um, about all the different parts of our school. So we wanted to show you a little sneak peek at a day inside, as um, Ms. Perry mentioned earlier, what, what a student day might look like. So at our theater summer camp, I think we produced some rising stars, and these two were eager to showcase their school. I provided Talia Borelli, a fifth grader who happens to be here in our audience tonight, and Liam Reagan, a fourth grader, with some ideas, a basic list of features. And I tapped into our new STEM teacher, Brandon Johnson, who I learned has a background in video. So <laughs> the three of them, I gave them a list of probably 30 things that I wanted included in this video, and I said, it has to be under seven minutes. <laughs> Go. And just you wait and see. I, it did not only met my expectations, but totally exceeded my expectations. So at this time, I present to you a day in the life of a Wentworth student. Kids get dropped early. We open at 7 a.m. They come into the calf. They can finish up homework. They can get help from our counselors. And we have the gym. We have our classroom that we can use. We have the cafeteria. And we have the entire playground. We'd love to get them plenty of opportunities to, to get their energy out. There's all Every day is a new adventure. Every, every day is a new adventure. This is your locker. Cool. Yeah. 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 Purple because you're in a purple learning community. What is a learning community? A learning community is a group of classrooms that learn together as a community. Come on, I'll show you. This is your classroom. Every classroom has an Eno board, a projector, and every student has a laptop. We are so fortunate to have technology truly at the point of learning. Wentworth students are engaged learners that use technology to solve, create, and collaborate. The power of technology can be game changing, and we're definitely changing the game. We strive to integrate technology in a meaningful manner and facilitate a student-centered learning environment. Plus, every room has a temperature control so it doesn't get too hot or too cold. Come on, there's so much more to see. This is the Learning Commons. It's a great place to check out a book and it's a great place to get your work done because it's always so quiet. How do you check out books? Oh, we'll use those computers over there. Make you just want to curl up and read a book. No kidding. And this is one of our music rooms. It's soundproof. And you learn a bunch of instruments and instruments family. Is there a school band? Yes, there's a school band in fifth grade. 
This is one of our art rooms. This is where your imagination can be wild. This is the gym. This is where you do physical education. It's also the best way to get exercise. Is gym the only thing you do in here? No, of course not. There's assemblies and also a stage, so you can do some play. This wonderful space allows us to hold two gym classes at the same time. We also can accommodate the entire school for assemblies. And we have the middle school visiting us for their pep rallies and assemblies and speakers. The community uses this facility every single day. It's a wonderful part of our school and, of course, one of the most popular things for kids. This is our cafeteria. Wow, it's big. Uh-huh. Some of the food grows from our garden. So the line looks huge. It must take forever to get your food. Actually, no. The lunch ladies are super nice and the line moves quick. And some of the food goes back to our garden through our compost program. This is the playground. This is where you'll be doing aftercare, before care, and recess, of course. This is the green room. You can pretend to be wherever you want. It's really cool. See, I want to be at the beach. Like it or cool. Four STEM labs. Each one has 3D printers. What is STEM? STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. This beautiful facility that the Scarborough community has invested in has transformed from a state-of-the-art building into a thriving learning environment, not just for our students and for our staff, but also for the entire community. Everything from pickleball in the gym to mix and mingle square dance in the cafeteria. We have 55 plus programs, either just spend time together playing cards, or have a guest speaker. So it's been really great. And the very best part is seeing when students and our seniors work together on a project. Whoa, look at the time. We should really get to class. Well, I hope you enjoy Wentworth. See you later. Bye. Monday through Friday, 8 to 3.30 school building. Our partnership with Community Services has been really mutually beneficial. They run before and after care here at Wentworth, so it opens at 7 a.m. and closes at 6 p.m. They have a designated office and classroom space here um, for before and after care, but during the day when those spaces aren't being used by students because they're in class, it's been open to 55 plus programs. So we've had um, senior drop-in center, a lot of courses offered here. There was recently a how to use your iPad course, fitness classes in our fitness room, um, and many more. And like I said, the collaboration between students and the seniors in our community has also been extremely mutually beneficial. Um, in addition to our after-school clubs, we also have several exciting evening functions for whole families to engage um, students, their siblings, and their parents, and just some of those things are listed in the middle column here. And then finally, at any time, our playground is a, it's in full use. It is just hopping out there um, every weekend, every evening. Um, in addition to that, we have pre-K to 12 athletics using our gym. Um, I looked last week, we had 32 facility requests for after school events here, just, just last week, and that's really typical. Everything from nonprofit board meetings to um, scout meetings, the ski swap, ski swap fundraiser, um, Maine Children's Cancer Program fundraiser. So um, the, the building offers so much for so many, so many groups. So I wanted to, of course, um, 
have a special thanks. I greatly appreciate the support of our staff and our students who supported this opportunity to demonstrate the incredible return on investment that we have here at Wentworth School. And the quote at the bottom, which says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together, an African proverb, has sort of been our mantra this year at Wentworth. So for the first two years of opening school, we had to go fast in many ways. We had to transform this building into a learning community, as Julie mentioned, you know, just dismissing students at the end of the day. How's that going to look? All of the logistics involved in opening a brand new school. We had to go fast because the kids were coming and we had to have a great plan. Um, but now, one month into year three, we appreciate the opportunity to reflect and to share all of the great things that have happened over the past two years. And we really look forward to going far together with all of you. Thank you so much.
conservation and service and so there are events that are planned. What this is saying, there was an event this summer that was planned where they need to get a certain number of hours in, but they showed up and it was a pending thunderstorm. And the project manager deemed that it really wasn't unsafe to be out on the water and asking folks to go on water. So all this is saying is if there's an event scheduled and they have signed up to be there to show up for the event and it's called by the project manager because of the climate weather, they still get credit for the hours. So I think it's a reasonable change. I totally support it. I think we've had it. We have given opportunities for folks to comment. That's, that's really the basis for doing it. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, any member of the public who would like to address this matter, please approach the podium. I will accept the motion. Move, move. Second. Discussion. Um, I just want to say that uh, when I first read this, I thought it made perfectly good sense. Um, these folks were sitting in a lot of time on a plane flat, and it's hard work. It's darn hard work, and they're putting in this extra time. Um, so if they're taking time out of their schedules to show up, can't cold weather, uh, I think it's great to be able to give them credit for that. So I have plenty of support there. Other comments? Order 16-62, 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the new request for a liquor license and a food handler's license from Thao PCU, DBA Bo Hong Vietnamese Restaurant, located at 285 U.S. Route 1, Unit Number 2. Town clerk indicates that the matter is in order for our consideration. Uh, any member of the public would like to comment on this, please approach the podium. Accept the motion. Move approval. Discussion. pleasure of uh, going to Vietnam about four or five years ago uh, and spent a, the better part of a the month there and as gracious uh, guests, uh, hosts as I've ever visited uh, uh, across the sea. So uh, we have a long history uh, with Vietnam and I, I can report that their feeling towards U.S. citizens is very warm and very welcoming and uh, I, uh, I wish these people well in their new venture. So, Anyone further comment? All in favor? Chris. Oh, sorry, just, uh, you know, I think it's uh, wonderful the diversity of restaurants we're starting to get in town. Uh, you know, uh, like we're having two opening up, the Vietnamese restaurant. Um, we've got wonderful uh, collections in town, and I'm, I'm very pleased for that, and I hope they can be. Here we go. Uh, all in favor? Those that you have. Thank you. Old business, not at this time. New business. Order number 16-63, first reading and schedule a public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendment to Chapter 601, the Town of Scarborough Traffic Ordinance, Section 25, Parking Restrictions, Subsection A. And I'll ask the Town Manager to uh, introduce that list and then ask the Chair of the Ordinance Committee to comment first. Yes, um, staff has been working on this for a better part of three years or so. I'm looking in the audience. Uh, Wally Fengler is here. Wally has been uh, um, in the middle of this conversation right along on behalf of the, the church. Uh, the conversation began really once they identified, and, uh, to our satisfaction, that actually Orchard Street uh, appears to exist at least partially on church property. And that's kind of where the conversation started. Uh, through the intervening discussions and years, it really came down, and we came to understand that parking is, is really their, their, their primary concern, if you will. And so the conversation kind of took a turn in that direction, and the town engineer most recently came up with a design that would allow for three on-street parking spaces. And she was able to look at the existing right-of-way and paved surface and determine that uh, two travel lanes and a and on-street parking could exist uh, without any, any safety so this matter uh, made its way up through the ordinance committee, and I'll certainly let uh, the committee chair speak to their uh, deliberations on the matter. Um, I would just simply end by saying that the ordinance committee asked that 
I do some outreach to the neighborhood, so I do send out 55 letters to folks that I presume would be most interested in those that live closest. And two folks did uh, express, uh, provide some comment, I believe I have provided those to the, to the council. Uh, since this evening, someone else came up and inquired whether additional signage might be appropriate uh, just to warn, and that's something we can do on the administrative level if that's something we need to uh, let Councilor Gettery, uh, yes, thank, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, as uh, uh, Andrew Hall uh, mentioned, it's open for uh, Ordinance Committee and it's really interesting. Also, it may serve as a to do this to help out the church with parking, particularly during events uh, that they have um, from time to time doing suffering, funerals, and whatnot, weddings, and whatnot. Um, so, um, a lot of input, a lot of discussion, and I, I, uh, I'm very good. Members of the public, anyone wishing to uh, address this matter, please approach the podium. Uh, accept the motion. So moved. Okay. Discussion. That's okay. So, so um, I, I apologize. I maybe it's not my package. Um, I have a couple of letters. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 I, uh, I will pack them all up and make sure you have them. Separate email. Email. Yeah. Separate email. Great. And if I should give any uh, additional comments between now and the next meeting, I'll try to those as well. Any comments? Okay. Um, I would just say that if anyone's familiar with this area, I think the good part about this um, change in ordinance is that it actually um, kind of brings more. Um, I'm having a brain cramp tonight. It actually, it's sort of, uh, things are not really laid out very well over there right now, and I think this actually brings more to it. Um, it'll make it easier for people to see where they're parking. Uh, it'll make the flow better. I think the whole, the, the town engineer did an incredible job with putting that all together, and I think it's important that we support this. Um, I think if there are some complaints, the ones that we've seen are, are very easily fixed. Um, and so I don't see why there would be any reason not to support this. I think anytime, you know, anytime we can support also a business in town um, that's looking for a little bit of help, I think that's always a good thing too. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, order 16-64, act on the request to accept the policy establishing a methodology for calculation of project, projected valuation. And I'll ask the town manager to explain what this is about, and then I think we may have a uh, motion to set this aside for the time being. Uh, yes, uh, just for, for, what, for my part in this, every year during budget time, um, often at the expense of some you know, very valuable budget discussion in terms of priorities, we get mired in this discussion of what is the projected value for next year. Um, understandably, part of the budget deliberation, uh, we can't help but anticipate what it means for the tax rate. Unfortunately, at the time you're passing the budget, uh, we're three months away from knowing the final valuation, so that's a bit of a, it's always a conversation piece. Uh, most recently, in this last budget year, we took a bit of a different approach, and what is before you tonight, the Rules and Policy Committee really kind of or, or try to put it down as a policy. So there's some consistency uh, in the future. And I should have known that uh, Councillor Rowan was really the, the chief proponent, the chief uh, author and architect of this, and it's unfortunately he's not here. Uh, this is not at all time sensitive. Uh, it's really something that we need in advance of budget deliberation. So uh, I would suggest, uh, in deference to Councillor Rowan, so we can introduce it and answer any questions. It may make sense to table this in the next meeting. Councilor Hayes, would you like to add anything uh, as a part of rules and policies? No, I think I can comment on that. It's not time sensitive, and I appreciate the opportunity. A lot of work and effort into it, and maybe some questions around the formula and other things that they will be willing to postpone it for the future. Is that the motion to do? Okay, thank you. Uh, not non debatable, a motion to uh, say this? I can certainly remember that we have to put in a date certain stuff. 
Public comment. Anyone wishing to uh, speak on this issue, please? Uh, uh, Set the motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Chris, that was such a thorough explanation. <laughs> I don't think we need one. <laughs> <laughs> Any other doubts? Good. All in favor. Opposed? Yeah. Thank you. Worth noting. Looking after their interests. I would just, it's worth noting, um, you know, the town has been approached regarding uh, Avenue 2 and Pine Point, but the underlying fundamental issues are no different uh, in terms of the town never exercising its interest in uh, prior rights of way. And, uh, so there's, there's direct parallels for sure. There is a similarity, and, and the goal, as we have said with Avenue 2 from the very beginning, is to protect and preserve public access uh, over Avenue 2, and we will continue to uh, carry on those discussions, and in fact, we have been carrying them on both with Mr. Gendron, the abutter, as well as keeping those people in the Pine Point community who have a high degree of interest and a right, certainly a right to have that interest, keeping them informed. Chris? Uh, just one the question for the town manager, are we aware of any other situations where we've got paper sheets or situations again where we, we haven't exercised our rights and we should go back and look at town wide to bring all this stuff up at once? Or should we handle that in our situation? I recall Councillor Hayes asked for, we produced a map that I, I may need to provide to you uh, for uh, any potential for a similar request in the Pine Point area. Uh, I can't say we've done it town wide. Undoubtedly, there are other similar yeah. uh, And there is no question, it is a complicated area of law. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, the seven of us all agree, as well as the town manager, that protecting the public's right of access is a paramount consideration. And that's what we will, I think, strive for as our goal in every one of these instances that arise. Order number 16 dash. Yes, Peter. I guess I think that's a question to the town When I asked about this particular situation, when you said there's parallels to Avenue 2, I thought this was a little bit different because as, as the chair gave the explanation, this had been a commitment in the prior agreement that we had made in this particular case, that's true. which may be different than anything on Avenue 2. Yes. So, so I just want to. And I, and I think I, I was thinking there was a clear distinction between this situation. Good point, because the, the parallel here is the uh, uh, need for the town to negotiate a public access easement deed from the abutter, uh, as opposed to the oversight uh, on the Levitt's part. But uh, that what occurred in 2000 and Two, one. 2001 was the result of the town recognizing that to get a clear public right of access, it needed to negotiate with those abutters. Any other questions, Hi. Order 16-66, act on the request to set the date, time, and location of the municipal elections for Tuesday, November 8, 2016. It can't come soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> that may not be in the order, but it's certainly the widespread feeling of many people. Uh, appoint the warden, set the hours for voter registration, and act on appointments of election, ballot, clerks, pursuant to Chapter 200, Article Roman Numeral 8, nomination and elections, and authorize the town clerk to make any additional appointments as necessary. Anyone wishing to, well, let's we'll get an explanation first. Any, really, any explanation that be required of, of this matter? I think this is pretty self explanatory an action that every town council and board of selectmen are required to take for every municipality. Uh, anyone in the public who would like to address this, please, person, vote. Uh, accept a motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Yes, I'll fix that arena. Um, 
just very quickly, I'll just put in my annual plea for uh, workers. I was one of the only workers. Oh, good. Oh, good. Because uh, it's very important to have an opportunity to be working at the election, particularly during a presidential year. So I just wanted to make sure that we have that volunteer. Uh, Mr. Gazer. Uh, I, I just want to uh, thank everybody who's put their name out there and running for office. <laughs> everybody sitting here realizes it's a lot of work <laughs> and it's a big commitment. So um, I, I, best of luck to all of those people running contested and uncontested races. There's nothing uh, uh, more uh, thrilling than putting your name in and then two weeks later getting a letter from Tilly saying, congratulations, you're unopposed and uh, <laughs> prepared to be sworn in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and really thank you to Wentworth School for being able to host us. It's a, it was a mutually supportive arrangement and uh, we, have, we are being displaced because we expect early voting to be so strong that uh, we're going to need to not just use the town clerk's office but <coughs> use the, uh, the chambers. Uh, for uh, to set up for early voting. So we expect we'll be displaced for a couple of more meetings uh, before we're back uh, after the election on November. Yeah. Just for the uh, for the public, including absentee voting begin at town hall to put those public meetings. Okay, so that's Tuesday mm -hmm. at 8 a.m. Yeah. Okay. So coming right up, uh, everybody. Uh, uh, other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Order 16-67. Uh, uh, this is an addition to tonight's agenda. Act on the request to authorize the town manager to sign a letter of support for the Eastern Trail Alliance regarding their grant application to People for Bikes for the Eastern Trail, quote, close the gap fundraiser. And I would ask the town manager to introduce this. Yes, uh, among other things, we partnered with the Eastern Trail Alliance and the Eastern Trail Management District um, to, uh, to work toward this close the gap campaign. Uh, they've been terrific about identifying grant opportunities, and just this afternoon we were made aware of them wanting to submit a grant uh, tomorrow or by the end of the week, certainly before you meet again. And they look for a number of letters of support and ask the town whether we be willing to. And the council has been uh, very involved in that uh, fundraising campaign. And, uh, I don't know if you have any further comments? Or? No, I mean, other than, you know, I think the time is ticking. We're really trying to collect the money than we thought. This is a grant opportunity and, and they had requested to send even more letters of support we can get and they asked individual committee members to send those letters but the thought was that in the town of Scarborough we've already funded part of this in our budget but the town council supported the concept of the application that would just help the process but that's why we're in front of you. time critical that the, the clock is ticking and so we were hoping to be able to get something approved tonight so we can get it Incorporating into the I should note this letter does uh, recite some of our historical support uh, through the years. We've been legendary and been very supportive of the trail, at least for Fortune and Scarborough. And more importantly, uh, most recently, uh, your, your support in this current budget uh, directly towards the campaign. So I think this letter is supported. Uh, Any other uh, uh, Councilor Kaiser? Do we need to have I beg your pardon, I don't know if the particular is that uh, you arrived back in the office at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I, I only ask because I know there's, there's still significant funding that we have, so um, yeah, every little bit helps, of course. Um, I just don't know how much of a you know, substantial grant this would be, but um, I don't, but I'll report it either way. I'll report those details. <coughs> uh, members of the public uh, wishing to address this matter, please press the vote. Uh, I went to the TEDCO uh, annual dinner last night 
uh, and this was a subject of discussion. Uh, and I brought this with me today. This was a flyer that uh, I received while I was there. Uh, and I, it, really, it escaped me that this fundraising effort is very much a matching grants and money that will go away if we do not raise uh, the remaining funds that are necessary. We've already raised uh, $3 million uh, and we need $800,000 more. So this is the fourth quarter of the year, the time when people start to say, why haven't I given more, made a good living, a uh, good salary, had a good year, and so uh, it caused me to pause and write a check with the mail today. So I would encourage everyone who has the ability, this is a treasure for the town of Scarborough to have the Eastern Trail run through, through it. And uh, I see people on it all the time every mode of transportation uh, 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 short of uh, cars. So uh, let's, uh, let's uh, as a community support them. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, non action items, none. Uh, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. Chris, let's start down there with you. Uh, nothing from energy. We have the, uh, and I don't, certainly don't want to put her on the spot, but we have the, the wonderful distinction of having a superintendent here, so I would be happy to yield my time to the school board <laughs> if there's anything at all that she'd like to address or mention. Uh, not, not to, again, not to put you on the spot or anything, but um, I, you know, uh, the podium jurors, I did like it. <laughs>
no, no dollars lost, no, uh, no injuries to staff. Uh, that was just the capstone of the interesting day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Council Member Cummins. Who sat down with Council Member? Thank you. Um, first, back to uh, Ms. Crosby and uh, Keith Berger. Thank you very much. It's the young kids that uh, took us around were absolutely incredible. Uh, very articulate. We have a wonderful home here. And so thank you for setting us and joining here. Um, also wanted to, uh, even though she left, uh, welcome Ms. Crockett to the family. Um, I'm really excited to work with her on behalf of the finance uh, here. So with her expertise, I actually have a little bit of familiarity with where she came from. And uh, actually her work up in the acting area was fantastic. It was one of the major communities. So welcome aboard. I um, also went to the CITCO annual meeting last night, and I just really wanted to thank Karen Martin, uh, the executive director, and then also um, Kevin Freeman, the chair of the board. Uh, what a great presentation. Mike Vail from Hannaford was the guest speaker. That was absolutely wonderful uh, to see him. We did give him a little bit of a rub, of course, because we said if we're good enough to rub, we could also live here, then we should have the CEO of Hannaford living in Scarborough, too. But I guess he doesn't want to live here. But yeah. But he has his company here, so that's even more important. So, uh, but it was it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, evening, and I just wanted to remind the board and the chairman of the board, I will not be um, at the next meeting. I have a business to come. Thank you. Councilman Kevin. Uh, yes. Um, again, thank you. And it's the Weber School for Home uh, I have to say, when I watched that video, it was it was made. Um, it almost brought tears in my eyes. I, 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 as people may or may not know, I taught at Dunstan. I taught sixth graders, which is a bit older. Uh, but it made me think, God, it made me so much fun to come back and teach you this uh, So many exciting <laughs> things going on. So uh, thank you for uh, for uh, pulling at my heart things like that. Um, uh, and I also said so. I wasn't able to take the presentation. They do a wonderful job with uh, getting the business community together with uh, town employees and uh, elected officials, and uh, it's just a very, it's a very nice appearance, and nice evening. I'm sorry, I ha had to leave early because I had another meeting I had to be at. Uh, and I also would like to welcome Marissa. Uh, I'm very excited for, for the town and for Mr. Hall <laughs> uh, to have. Uh, Seems like she's going to be a great fit. Everything I've heard is wonderful, and uh, we certainly need to help. And that's all for me. Thank you. Uh, uh, so I'll, I won't repeat everything that was said. Um, thank you, Superintendent Cooper Booker, Principal Crosby. Um, I've, I've had the pleasure of serving uh, with the Kelly School Board. The wonderful facilities. Um, I, the town should be more than pleased. We should be honored that we have the commitment that we have from, from staff and uh, thank the members of the school board and staff for staying late. It's going to be yet another night for them. Um, and uh, also went to SETCO. Um, uh, hopefully, Bill, you've got some of the statistics. I was very impressed with the turnout. Um, we've got some incredible businesses in the town. Um, and, and it's always a, a, a proud moment to be able to honor them and, and uh, recognize them. Uh, and I believe the SETCO, uh, according to Karen, the, 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 the awards dinner is so popular now that they actually had to turn some people away uh, yeah. because of the capacity of, of the Black Point. The Black Point Inn, of course, is wonderful host as always. Um, there will be lots of things to be thought of in this town, and, and I'm just uh, honored to be able to participate. Thank you, Councillor Yeah, I would mean, echo pretty much what everybody else has said. I, I did uh, a little different take to go to SETCO last time, which was really exciting what's kind of happening in the business community here in Scarborough. It was really fun to see the energy of the people and I think the comments about the CEO of Hannah for coming and speaking really is committed to local economy. That's all great. The other piece is just, uh, just a, a special thanks tonight. We did have a tour guide. I have to call it out. It's Cormac Murphy, he was incredibly personal. I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking there is no way I could have done that. It is a, he was entertaining, he was very passionate. <laughs> it just made this, it, I, I laughed all the way through, or smiled all the way through. We, we had a lot of passion, so I just, special call out. That's, 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 that's just a real talented student. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I go last. Um, <laughs> I, I just echo what everybody else said. I mean, it's a fabulous school. We're so lucky to have you. Um, I, 
I feel really lucky. My son has been here. He started in third grade when they opened, and he made it all the way through to the fifth grade. And then, um, I just, I've been able to see firsthand at the amazing things that this school can do. And, um, you know, all the way, I mean, the things that they offer that so many schools don't, it just blows your mind. And the start that some of these kids are getting that they wouldn't normally get um, makes us a really lucky town. So thank you very much for your support. And the world's different, so, um, and that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, the, the things that struck me at the Secto Annual Meeting was, uh, and really a, uh, a, a cheer for characters, their commitment to, to local producers it was really remarkable. Uh, and, uh, it, it, you know, the sense of going with local, fresh products was, was amazing to hear that story told. Uh, there were several other awards given. The new business of the year was Salt Pump Climbing Company. Uh, and the gentleman, uh, and it looked like a, a kind of an Ivy League level group of people who all decided to go climbing <laughs> instead of going to class from the, from the list of names. That was my wife's take on that. Uh, the uh, legacy business was Pierce Furniture, which is a wonderful furniture company uh, uh, out at Roundwood. Uh, also recognized uh, were uh, On the Vine Market out at Dunstan and mainly Tubbs, uh, which has now taken over a huge amount of space. We were building there. Uh, and their stories were wonderful. Uh, it, 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 as members of this community, you'd be proud to know that these local businesses are really enormously successful, and uh, it's great to have them there. And I was glad to just be part of it, be there to apply uh, their uh, their recognition. Uh, I'll close on one final note. Uh, uh, David Nelson passed away on Monday. Uh, those of you who know David, wonderful person, and who has served this community for decades. Uh, he was a trustee of the Scarborough Sanitary District since 1993. And so I know all of our condolences go with, uh, uh, out to his family. Mm -hmm. So, uh, except the motion to conclude the proceedings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get the key part shared? Right? Right no. Yeah. <laughs> Try and sneak it out of the <laughs> 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 These are way, these are way down in the business. <laughs> 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 <laughs>